Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back um, to another in our video chat series um, for the Half Earth Project Educator Ambassadors. I'm, I'm really pleased with, uh, to, to be able to welcome Christy Morrissey of the University of Saskatchewan um, this morning. And um, Christy has, has agreed to come on to talk a little bit, to provide a little bit of context for thinking about Rachel Carson's Silent Spring. Um, an extremely important and influential book. And I think that Christy is in just a great position to discuss the book a little bit, give us some context, um, because she's doing very relevant research, current research that is, um, relates in some ways to things that Rachel Carson wrote about all those many decades ago. Um, and so uh, we're, we're gonna have a great conversation this morning. I wanna say hi to Christy, how are you doing? Good morning, hi, I'm well, thank you. Yeah, well, thanks for, I know it's, it's pretty early there, your time, and I really appreciate you making the time for this conversation. Um, I'd like to start out just by asking, tell us a little bit about um, what you're doing now, you know, who you are and what you're, you're the short version of your career path to, to what you're doing sure. now. Sure, well, um, I'm a professor at the University of Saskatchewan that you mentioned um, in, I have a cross appointment in a couple of different units, so which reflects some of the diversity of my, of my interests and training. So I'm in, uh, I'm in biology, but I also uh, um, have an appointment in the School of Environment and Sustainability, which is a very interdisciplinary school. And uh, I also um, am an associate member in toxicology, uh, where, uh, which deeply reflects my, my specific training as an ecotoxicologist. Very interesting, so, I have to say. Um, yeah, wetland is not the first thing that comes to mind when I think of, of Saskatchewan. <laughs> yeah, it's an amazing uh, landscape. It's kind of this um, neat uh, place because you think of it as uh, just kind of vast open prairie with grasslands, but um, the whole landscape is dotted with these prairie pothole wetlands, um, which hmm. are real hot spots for biodiversity. So there are millions of pothole wetlands throughout the landscape, and um, these, these uh, happen to be often embedded directly in agriculture. So there is kind of a conflict there where we have um, sort of a mission and interest for conservation of, of wildlife and biodiversity, um, but we're also in a very um, industrialized working landscape. Right, and when you say industrialized, um, that primarily you mean the scale and methods of the agriculture that's going on in that region. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the things when I first moved to Saskatchewan, I was just blown away by the size of a, a so-called field. So <laughs> a field in Saskatchewan is um, 160 acres. So wow. it's like a, a county half a mile. <laughs> yeah, it's a half a mile by a half a mile. Um, yeah. That's one field with one crop. And for many farmers, they call those quarter sections, by the way. So the, for many farmers, um, they have farms that, that, that uh, farm 40, 80, 100 of those quarter sections. Wow. Um, yeah, it's an amazing, the scale of everything is just uh, mind blowing. Were, was Silent Spring something that you were, a, as a book, Rachel Carson's thinking, was that something in your training and in your mind, or was it something that um, you kind of returned to when you moved to Saskatchewan? Yeah, that's a great question. I've certainly known about Silent Spring um, throughout my, you know, career. And as a graduate student, I recall picking it up and sort of superficially, I think, reading it. Um, and, uh, you know, over the, once I, I started working more on pesticides and the issues that, uh, that sort of, um, I guess, capture what people think Silent Spring is. I, I, re I, I did pick the book up again, um, you know, about 10 years ago and really just read it in depth. I now actually teach with that book um, mm. as well because I think, and you know, the response I've gotten from students is they really appreciate, um, you know, really reading it. 
because it's so much more than what you think it is. Mm -hmm. um, and she was such a revolutionary scientist. Um, and so in many ways, both, both personally and professionally, I really admire uh, what she did, what Rachel Carson did in, in writing that book. But there are so many parallels and so many things that are current today even though that book was written more than 50 years ago. The yeah. scale is huge. Um, so I mentioned about, you know, the size of fields in Saskatchewan. Well, um, by the way, Saskatchewan's sort of the middle of Canada there in that very dark uh, northern area. So this is, yeah, that's the prairie pothole region. So yeah. Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and Saskatchewan is the most, is the central province that has the, the, the highest pesticide use in Canada. Um, and also because it's the most agriculturally intensive uh, area of Canada. So, you know, there are 379 million hectares uh, or, or almost 42% of the land surface in the U.S. is agricultural land. And in Canada, we have a smaller fraction, but of course that's because we're a very large land mass in Canada, much of which is, you know, uh, not really developed at all in northern Canada. But Nonetheless, there is a very large proportion of, of uh, North America that is, um, that is covered in agricultural land. So I kind of think of this as this is the habitat um, for biodiversity, for example. And, you know, this vast expanse of habitat, we as humans are controlling. So most of us kind of think about habitat as, you know, these wild spaces right. in parks and so on. But wildlife don't really know about that. So, so they don't have a park permit and, you know, they will go wherever there is, you know, the things they need, which is, you know, food and, and other resources. And in many cases, agricultural land is habitat for a lot of species. In fact, there are uh, we've we've done a, done work that there's over 70 species of, of birds that are that are in North America that are um, directly tied to agricultural um, farmlands. So that is their you know they they regularly occur and breed in farmland habitats. So. So it's not a rare thing. It's not right. sort of like a few species, but a lot of um, species of birds, including the swallow, many of the swallows uh, pictured here is the tree swallow. And of course, um, these uh, areas are, you know, driven over by large equipment um, to not only plant crops, but also spray um, these areas with pesticides, um, often multiple times throughout the season. Mm -hmm. That's and the amount of pesticides we're using is pretty high. Yeah. Uh, I've given some statistics there for you to, to look at, right. but it is, it is pretty high. Billions of pounds and 6,000 registered products. So many yeah. different chemical yeah. products to, to, to really understand right. and keep track of. You know, this is an example where I've really learned a lot. And so I, I, I'm sure... Um, the, the students and, and educators will feel the same way. So thank you so much. And I'm going to keep thank track you. of your excellent work. Thank you, Christy. Th thanks a lot, Dennis. Have a great day. You too. Bye now. Bye-bye.